We are making history and recording history. This is uh, unstructured open time. Uh, the usual agenda is what are the issues of interest to you? What are the comments that you would make? I've always had a very deep uh, appreciation for the fact that you have walked many miles in the shoes that we occupy. And uh, I can offer cogent advice and uh, cogent comments about uh, what you expected or the way things should have been or should be. Uh, I have no idea whether this tradition will continue um, after I leave, but because I'm the one that's been pushing this particular thing, but I hope so. And um, I might even come back uh, if that's the case. Ni, nee, talk to us. Yes, please. Talk about uh, how you got involved, what the, what the early days were, and, and what your, uh, yeah, well, that's fine. Go back to how, wherever you want. And what the issues were, and uh, um, any particular uh, encounters or episodes that uh, come to mind. The early days were one of nobody present from the developing world, few, few. very few. And um, in Africa in particular, practically empty. So the first job was um, how do we create company for ourselves? Uh, we had a lot of help from the colleagues in the developed environments who urged us on but we had a challenge of bringing the right people uh, into the community. We're also mindful that um, if you don't bring the right balance of people, you could lose track. In the early days, the focus was, of course, getting technical operations going, making sure we could operate our CCTLDs or preparing for the numbers registry. Because we didn't, they were not there yet. So, the focus was on bringing professionals who could help us um, accomplish that, um, and also forming the necessary linkages to encourage us to keep doing that. Um, we had challenges not only in finding the people, but also the supports for, for them. Uh, in some cases, we had challenges with the environment itself was not friendly. ISPs could not easily get started. And so, but many of these things have, have changed. Um, technical know-how was a problem, and that's why the first active organization was AFNOG, which was the operator group. And these were operators training themselves and then remaining as a community. And it is from the AFNOG that all the other groups began to split. So it was the place where we built consensus for things like the numbers registry, the CCTLD Federation, and so on. So that's how our case uh, evolved. But now it's, it's free running like we want, um, quite organic, new groups emerge, some pass away, but in general, it's growing. I hope that helps. Yeah. How did you first get involved with ICANN? I was part of the... Um, I was very active with Internet Society um, and in INET. And I think in one of the meetings, we had to do uh, IH, IAHC work. And I happened to have been drafted to chair uh, a session. And uh, from there, I continued to be involved. I thought of it as the same, actually. Um, one being operational administration uh, and the other one being impact on policies and social and so on. So I came in through the INET uh, angle. Um, I wonder who here uh, served on the board the earliest. Um, is there anybody from the original board here? I don't think so. Lyman, when did you begin? 99. You started in 99? Yes. Oh. The first elected. First elected. Yeah. So he beat you? He beat you. And wh when did you serve, Ni? 2000. 2000. Well, you're the winner. Uh, 
Amadeu Abril from the prehistory. I was in the board 99, 2003. Two terms, two years, and the reform saved me. So he was sent back into civil life in 2003. Uh, if you want to know how we got involved, you don't, but you know, I will, in any case, <laughs> because I was bored. Uh, that is, I was uh, working as a, law, as a lawyer. I mean, some people do that uh, sometimes. And uh, for some strange reasons, I mean, uh, a partner in my firm got ill, and I had to inherit all his family law cases, something I hated. Because in family law, people don't want solutions. They want to use you as a biochemical weapon to destroy the other party. Right? And there is no possible arrangement, whatever. So I, I did that for one year and a half. And then when this partner died, I left the firm. The next day, I said, I won't work as a lawyer again in my life. <laughs> I was lying, as always. <laughs> but you know, I was firmly convinced about that. So I accepted a part-time job at the university and said, well, now for some months, I want to do something funny. So I've been using the internet for some time, but I have no idea how it works. I mean, how in hell emails go from one side to the other? and how we can read these pages and search these waste databases for antitrust cases, all this. So I, you know, enrolled in the ITF, I, tried, I, do, I did my research, and it was in a cryptography work uh, group that, my God, I mean, each email to me one day. So it was farther and farther and farther from getting to the point. But at that moment, you know, uh, interning had the very good idea to start charging for domain names. And then, you know, the domain name wars exploded. So, oh, this for a lawyer is something I, I think I can understand a little bit better than cryptography. So I got involved with there. And then, uh, you know, you know what happened. I meet people like me and Roberto and all the others that were trying to solve a problem. And the problem at the time was how you move from an internet that, you know, somehow is overseen by a guy that has charisma because everybody knows him to a church, from God to a church, because many different people will be there and nobody knows everybody, so we need a structure. How to enlarge the DNAs and uh, how to make the DNAs to work better for everybody. That were the ideas, and then we discussed about, a lot about uh, procedure. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Roberto. Yeah, I have <clears throat> two very quick um, anecdotes. Uh, the first one was prompted by <clears throat> uh, Amadeo, who was um, one of my reference um, persons when, uh, when I started. You're calling me old or something? <laughs> no, um, <laughs> big brother. <laughs> um, actually, I, I happened to follow um, Amadeo in, uh, in his um, steps, uh, including in the position that I am now in the Board of Public Interest Registry, but anyway. Um, um, the, the, um, the first anecdote is how I got involved. Uh, and the short answer is by chance. I was uh, responsible for software development um, at the um, European Telecommunication Standards Institute. And the deputy director general will started a program with, um, um, for getting the institute more involved in the internet. And um, uh, she, uh, um, Bridget Cosgrave, somebody, uh, Amadeo remembers the name uh, at least, and, and Francisco as well. Um, so uh, she was part of uh, CORE, the um, Committee of Registrars. And uh, <clears throat> the first meeting was set uh, in Tokyo, the 8th of November, 97. Uh, and um, uh, a, a couple of days before, she went to um, the, the doctor for a medical, uh, and, and um, um, she was pregnant, and the doctor told her, uh, you can't uh, travel. And so she called me and said, uh, you go to Tokyo to this meeting. I knew absolutely nothing. And, uh, and that was uh, just a change of my life. Apparently, I did well, because then I ended up in being the um, internet advisor uh, on Etsy, changed uh, job, and so on. So that was the... the and, and you weren't pregnant, right? No, I was not. <coughs> That's, um, she, she picked me because she was sure I was not. Um, that, that, interestingly enough, but that's a, a, a side thing, that happened to be a, a good move because um, basically, and Francisco remembers um, those days, uh, those were the days in which um, Etsy, um, predominant in Etsy were the, the telecom operators. And the telecom operators in the late 90s uh, 
were not really um, in, in very good terms uh, with internet people. And so to pick somebody uh, that was not from that, uh, from that world was a, was a good move. But the second thing that I, I would like to remember here is, um, and that was prompted to me by what Ni nee said, um, in the very beginning, when the, when the DNSO was formed, uh, then uh, uh, there were these constituencies, and, uh, and then the council. Um, the council was supposed to be the synthesis of uh, all the discussions in the constituencies, uh, but there was no forum where ideas from different constituencies could be exchanged. And so um, uh, me, uh, started uh, uh, what uh, then became the uh, General Assembly of the, of the um, uh, DNSO. And somebody proposed me to uh, chair, to um, put my candidate for chairing the, um, the General Assembly of the DNSO. And I said, no, listen, now I'm, I'm in, in no constituency. I'm, I'm just a, a plain user. I'm, I'm, I'm not connected uh, with, uh, with this world anymore. And the answer was, in that case, you have the best person to do it. <laughs> and so I ended up in chairing the, the, the General Assembly of the, of, the GN, of the DNSO. And I think that that's uh, why I'm saying this, uh, because uh, it was the, the, the first attempt uh, to bring uh, um, at a level that is not the, the, the top level, the, the council, the decision-making bodies, but to bring the discussion among constituencies. And, and I like to see this uh, as the first uh, step to multi-stakeholderism uh, um, from the bottom up. So um, it was an interesting experience. It was a challenging experience. Those who have lived those days remember that um, we were flooded by emails. We had to um, set up rules uh, in order to, um, to limit um, um, insults uh, and, um, uh, and all this. Um, the vice chair was Har um, Harald Halverstrand. Interestingly enough, we both ended up in, in the at different times in the um, ICANN board. Um, so we set up rules, uh, um, a moderator, and so on. And then at the end, it was, uh, it was an interesting um, uh, experience. The um, um, person that contributed uh, most uh, to that mailing list uh, was the very famous um, uh, Jeff Williams. <laughs> <laughs> and the debate is still on whether he is a person or not. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway. Um, um, it was probably not successful in achieving um, things, uh, the General Assembly, but I think it, it, it was a good, um, um, a, um, a good experiment, and um, uh, you know we learned uh, something from it. Yeah. The other history that is uh, interesting and how to deal with uh, two different countries going to Brazil in 2003 to the GAC meeting, and uh, the two countries uh, have uh, some problems not to be sitting together in the same table. And they uh, both came to me and said, well, I can go to Brazil if uh, the other cannot, and the other say the same. So I was thinking about, we use in the GAC uh, to put all the names of the counties. So my simple solution was take out all the, the names of the countries and uh, register all the names of the persons and uh, try start to talk with the person directly, not mention which country the person believes. So both countries sit down in Sao Paulo, in Rio in that time. So it was... Um, uh, uh, start of a very good relationship with the two countries that uh, became, for me, uh, a very interesting uh, uh, situation that I, I was invited uh, almost all the time after that to sit with each one and have a lunch with each one to talk about 
if they if I will guarantee in the others, I said, well, in Brazil I can guarantee, in the other countries I cannot. So it was uh, a very interesting uh, opportunity to bring together people that uh, uh, are not, uh, you know, uh, comfort to be together in the same table. So, end of stories because there is a lot. Bottom line is we bring people together to be uncomfortable with each other. <laughs> Lyman, your turn. It's interesting to, to think back to some of the early um, issues, um, that ICANN issues that I can face. It was easy, um, even from the beginning, to know that you know registries and registrars and so forth should be a part of ICANN and should have a, a role to play in the decisions that it made. But it was not at all clear what, if any, role uh, individual internet users, the at, what has come to be called the at-large, would be represented. And if we go all the way back to 2000, ICANN actually conducted uh, what was the first and very definitely the last um, open election for five board seats, one from each of the five geographic regions. And I was one of 10 candidates in the North American region, and this was my introduction to participation in ICANN. I remember that um, uh, Larry Lessig was one of the other North American candidates, and uh, he was at the Berkman Institute at the time. He arranged, uh, he actually got uh, Jonathan Zittrain to arrange for us to have a, uh, a candidate's debate at Harvard. And so all 10 of us gathered there, and I went back uh, recently just uh, to refresh my memory. I looked at the transcript of that debate, which uh, lasted two hours and was broadcast and so forth. And what struck me in the transcript was the incredible idealism that was expressed by all the people who were there. They just thought that they were about to change the world. And I, have, I, I was just astonished. Um, not that we have necessarily lost that kind of enthusiasm, but certainly the youthful energy that was represented in that candidate pool um, was, was remarkable. Um, I managed to not come in last in the voting, um, but I managed to come in ninth only because one of the 10 candidates withdrew uh, before the end of the voting. And, uh, but that obviously did not dim my enthusiasm for ICANN as an enterprise. Um, when Nee and I were both on the board together a couple of years later, we were uh, two of the originally five and ultimately winnowed down to three uh, members of the Evolution and Reform Committee that uh, was tasked with carrying out the consequences of what our second CEO, um, uh, Stuart Lynn, had identified as a um, an organizational crisis that was going to prevent ICANN from uh, continuing to fulfill its mission. Uh, Alejandro Pasanti was uh, another member of that committee, as were Hans Kreienbrink and uh, Phil Davidson. And we had to tackle the issue of the at-large because, of course, we'd had this election and it was widely considered to have been less than a resounding success, um, notwithstanding the fact that it was completed and it did seat five directors. Um, and in the process of looking at the at-large, it was there was almost a rebound from the election experience, and it was not until the the last few iterations on the new bylaws, the reform bylaws, which were eventually approved in 2003, that we actually had a fully formed at-large advisory committee at the advisory committee level. There had been a number of attempts to have an at-large component within ICANN. Uh, with some other status, with um, what many people considered to be a lower or less than advisory committee status. But we did, in fact, finally come up with a structure that included an at-large, and of course, uh, we've seen that grow tremendously over the intervening six, uh, 13 years now, 14 years now. Um, so I guess the, from an anecdotal standpoint, the thing that I certainly uh, carry away from, from that experience in the early days of ICANN is the, the value of, let's call it youthful enthusiasm, but let's imagine also that it can uh, infuse even those of us who are no longer youthful. Fantastic. Ron. Thank you, Steve. As one of the newer members to this 
esteemed lunch of um, board members through uh, through history. Um, I I can't help but ask, especially of those that have been around a bit longer, and just hearing about the the early elections. Um, I don't have the details, but I hear there was some controversy in that election period where initially it was invalidated, and then subsequent to that it was redone. And and uh, I, don't, I don't know which part of the election you went through. If um, you can share some of that, I, I mean, just for since we're doing historical things uh, for the for the um, video montage, maybe we can add a little bit about that. Just uh, not just for me, but anybody else who might listen to this later. What were the, what were the issues there in that early election, and how did it get invalidated, and and uh, who survived that? Anyone? I don't remember the elections being invalidated. I guess you refer to the at-large ones. Uh, the SO ones sometimes were quite violent, like the DNSO, uh, but they were never uh, invalidated. But they had, uh, if I make, make the, com the, the, the comment, they had the byproduct of only allowing people with thick skin and uh, root models like me being on the board. Yeah, which you know eventually led to having a nomcom, a more peaceful way of selecting people that is not that contentious as it was the initial SO, especially the DNSO ones. Uh, regarding the uh, ALAC ones, a number of things happened. Some of the things that happened that but didn't lead to invalidation is was, uh, I would say, some kind of irregularities especially in the ASEAN area. In Europe, it was very simple. Uh, I mean, the problem with this election was, was something like bring your own electorate. Any election mean, means that you have a, a, an electoral base and you know these electoral base choose. But here was no electoral base, and each candidate was bringing the electoral candidate. So the European elections were German elections for the simple reason that the Bertelmann Stiftung, the Bertelmann Foundation, was spending a lot of money and getting a lot of attention in the German newspaper. So it was about whether this German candidate or that other German candidate or that other German candidate, which one bring its own electorate, would be elected. In Asia, what happened, it was a sort of nationalistic contest between Japan, uh, China, Korea, but especially Japan and China. One thing that was somehow irregular that somehow, you know, suddenly thousands of people enrolled for the elections, being all of them employees of a telco in Japan, right? And then the Chinese discovering that and coming to ICANN and saying, well, you should extend the term because we don't have enough time to enroll all the people we want to enroll to vote for our candidate. <laughs> and you know, this created a sort of tension. So what, what are we doing now? But it, what happened is that because of you know the incredible massive hammering of a couple of organized groups in Japan and China trying to enroll everybody, the system exploded. So at a certain point, nobody was able to enroll before the end, and nobody was able to vote at the moment of the, of the elections. And this created the problem of what to do, extend that, uh, which was done. But I don't think that was at any moment a real issue about invalidating the elections. It was a general consensus that redoing uh, the elections the next time should not be done with the same rules. That was quite clear. In the same vein on the question of uh, Ron, I think it would be also interesting to know why I can just select or elect five and not the nine who was supposed to be the nine. And um, uh, I, I, yeah, but it was supposed to be nine. And it was at the first time five, and then I can decide not to have a second uh, time for the fourth uh, remaining seats. And uh, it's why the initial people from the board stay longer than it was, uh, it was supposed. Um, and as I have the floor, I, I, I joined ICANN in Melbourne 2001. I just was hired by a, a non-for-profit company who gathers the chief information officer of the largest French company. And they just decided before I joined to be BC secretariat. Um, and and uh, then I arrived in Melbourne, and I was supposed to do that. And uh, I don't know. If you see when you arrive and you have um, Marilyn Cade, Phil Shepard, and uh, uh, Teresa uh, Swintard, and, and they are the one who tell you what to do, and, um, uh, and then they decide to have somebody at the end, and uh, they change the secretariat to somebody from Brussels. Uh, but I, I follow this up to the time I left uh, CIGREF, and uh, 
uh, when I start to be chair of the um, French chapter of ISOC, I become part of the discussion about the creation of the full at large, because as you know, after the election, uh, sorry, the selection by the board in 2003, it took four years to set up the regional at large organization. It was done in 2007, almost for the five region at the same time. Uh, and, um, and there we uh, had election for the ALAC, definitive ALAC uh, um, at large advisory committee uh, from, from the RALOs and the NAMCOM at that time. And um, I was elected, I guess, for one year and then for two years. And then the um, decision was taken to have two, no, one seat on the board for at large again. And it's why I came to the board for six months and three years. And during the course of this six plus three years, the board decided to extend everyone who was selected as SO and AC from the middle of the year to the end of the years. It's why I end up to do three term, six plus three plus six months, um, and then, then four years. Um, but in, in taking back some discussion, uh, it seems that the board were unhappy in 2000 with the election of the at-large people. Uh, just as a joke, I, it seems that the board currently is unhappy with at large because they didn't give the second seat to, uh, to, to at large to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody? Ah, Fonda. I'm um, sorry, Wendy. Thank you, uh, Wendy Seltzer. I wanted to pick up on uh, Amadeo, my fellow lawyer's uh, view of an exaggerated taste for procedure, uh, because uh, certainly uh, th that that is one of one of the components uh, of the, this group. And I mean, I, I've got involved with with ICANN first uh, from the. Berkman Center as a uh, law student facilitator of some of the, the early meetings, an early scribe, uh, and uh, somehow have uh, stayed engaged in, in, in various places, uh, served on the board as ALAC uh, liaison. And, and I think I've come to see that the, the procedures can serve as a way to bring more of the different viewpoints into discussion and uh, bring people to share ideas that they might not have initially have seen um, uh, as compatible. So uh, it's been interesting to, to watch uh, as a core of people come to support the ICANN idea, uh, even as they continue to have different ideas of what ICANN should do and what substantive policies should be chosen uh, by that organization. And I think core to sustaining that is continued focus on uh, the, the, the narrow set of functions that need to be coordinated uh, here by uh, ICANN and uh, leave most of the really exciting substantive policy discussions for uh, determination outside in the uh, places better suited to them. If I recall, you were heavily involved with the uh, push of getting a, a voting seat on the board for ILAC. Uh, is, that, is that wrong? I continue to, uh, I have always been um, ambivalent about how ALAC is constructed. I think that the individual user interest is uh, a critical one to be represented uh, in ICANN. I still don't have the uh, right solution to how to represent that correctly and get the engagement of enough people who represent sort of the, the, the individual user and not particular pieces of commercial uh, service to the individual user or particular ideological components uh, that they buttress by, uh, they, we, I mean, I have to include myself uh, there, and buttress by saying these are the interests of the, the, the individual. Um, and uh, I think we're seeing uh, 
in, in recent politics, direct democracy is not the answer. Uh, we need uh -huh. layers of structure to help uh, filter and uh, report the, the views and interests uh, of individuals. Um, so even uh, as a, study, a student of uh, law and politics, I don't have the, the answer to how, how we do that right in the global internet. Now, I wanted to say something completely different, just to change. Yeah? Explain something that has improved a lot in ICANN. It's how the board does the public meetings, and especially the votes. In the early days, you, if you check the minutes, you will see that everything was something like uh, 17 in favor, known against, or 17 against, known in favor, or 19 in favor, or perhaps 15 in favor, two absent, and two abstentions, something like that. That was not the reality. The reality is that the night before the public meetings, we were having a dinner. And by desert time, we started to vote, right? Even worse, before the elected people from a large, you know, the knees and others were there, it was a complete rehearsal. Then you will say that, and you will answer this, and you will move, and you will second. Everything was rehearsed like a pas de deux in ballet. It was deadly boring. It was, we were bad performers. It, it smelled pre-cooking. It was awful. Really, nobody could believe that. I do confess that sometimes I was voting against in the morning after, or abstaining, something I had voted in favor, just for the sake of somebody disagreeing, right? Because it, it could not be that everybody agreed on everything, smiling and with a perfectly rehearsed uh, ballet. And I think that you are much more credible now when you have real votes and we see that, you know, there are people in favor, people against, and people that don't have an opinion. And I think that's more, you know, it's m more helpful to the community to trust you that what we were doing in 99 and 2000 and even 2001, 2002 somehow. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Bruce, I want you to top that. <laughs> um, you've been off the board for a few minutes. Um, you were uh, on the board for a, a full nine years, right? And uh, vice chair for a lot. And you were chair of the GNSO Council for some years before that. And uh, my memory doesn't go back earlier than that. But uh, that's a long arc. Pick something uh, notable. It is interesting to, to reflect on that history. So I think I was there for about nine and a half years because I joined the, the half year. That's right. That was my doing, actually, <laughs> to right. extend some of these. So yeah, an extra half year. Yeah. Uh, 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 Sebastian was one beneficiary and you were another. That's correct, yeah. Um, look, it's interesting. It's quite a long... I've just been interested in listening and quite a lot of discussion about um, ALAC and the, and the process of appointing board members. Um, it's also tightly coupled with the introduction of the nominating committee as well, which I didn't really hear that much discussion about, but uh, I volunteered to participate as one of the members of a, 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 some sort of non-com advisory to the, to the actual review team or something. Like that. Um, but in, in any case, they're linked. Uh, and, uh, and I think the non-com was an attempt to sort of see, you know, how, how do we get the community appointing uh, members to the board that don't come from a particular supporting organisation um, or particular advisory committee. Uh, I think that's that's something I've noticed is, is trying to get that balance on the board between people that have spent years and, and attended many ICANN meetings before they joined the board, as I had. Um, I cut my teeth, I guess, you know, from the ground up, bottom up, so to speak. Um, as a member of the registrar constituency, then joined the, what was the DNSO Council at the time, which had the combination of the GTLDs and CCTLDs. I think Demi, who was here earlier, was on that council at the time as well. Um, and, and that in itself has been interesting because the, there was a, a, a split, there was a, a Brexit event that happened in the DNSO, and the uh, CCNSO went off and, and created their own supporting organisation and then appointed people directly to the board um, from that supporting organisation. Um, but I think one of the things I look at it is there's been organisational development, um, and a lot of people have talked about that, but there's also been people development. Uh, and I think there's two aspects of the people development. There's the people that have come through the community, taken on big roles, and then eventually joined the board. And I think Leon is a, is a great example of that, um, has just been elected from ALAC. But, um, you know, he was involved in ALAC, um, got involved in a leadership role in the 
accountability um, process and then, then was uh, eventually appointed to the board. So I think it's great to actually be able to see people develop within the community to those roles. But also I think it's good that the nominating committee finds people from outside the ICANN world that bring different perspectives. Thank you. Thank you. I've been looking forward to this. Thank you all. Thank you all.